And my co-coordinator, Dr. MD Samir, welcoming you all for this five-day FDP once again. As we enter into the fourth day, we have a special session with uh, Dr. C.H. Damodar Reddy on low dimensional material. Before welcoming you all, I would like to say Dr. C. Damodar Reddy is my close friend of mine. Uh, we too studied at um, JNT Anandapur in the year of 2000, uh, in the year of 1998. Uh, without uh, much delay, I, I will ask our participant, while you are entering into the meeting, please mute your microphone as well as camera. Please follow this instruction in between. Uh, uh, it will be disturbed to the all the participants. So you have to observe these uh, simple uh, things. So, uh, shall we start, Damu? Yeah, yeah. I am ready. Yeah. So you need to wait for some time, or uh, you can. Ah, uh, start seven, with seven days. Seventy-five people are there. Uh, we are yeah. expecting. We are expecting more. Uh, otherwise, we will wait another five minutes. Yeah, I'll wait five more minutes. Mm. Okay. Person, CS Damodar Reddy, sir, we welcome you to our uh, faculty development program on recent developments in mechanical engineering. So, sir, we'll be ideals that is graphene and bond. Sir is a scientist from IHPC Technical Singapore. Co coordinator, sir. Dr. Prabhakar, sir, to introduce sir to the audience. Uh, thank you, Sami. My heart is filled with immense joy and pleasure. Dr. C. H. Damodar Reddy he is currently working as scientist at the Institute of High Performance Computing, IHF, IHPC, A Star Singapore. He did his uh, BTEC from JNTU Anantapur in the year of 1998. M.Tech from IIT Gauhati in the year of 2000. He received a PhD from Nanyang Technological University, NTU, Singapore in 2006. His research explores the mechanical and interfacial properties of low dimensional material, study on nano friction, diffusion and deposition of nano and microparticles on surfaces, bonding mechanism between particles in additive manufacturing, his current fo focus is to create a novel structural structures using the low dimensional material and study mm. their mechanical properties for the high end structural application. He guided three PhDs. He's pub he published 33 SCA indexed papers in highly reputed international journals. He, he has also published more than 15 international conferences. He's He's completed an ongoing uh, projects of work of million of uh, CD of 0.8 million in Indian currency. It is approximately 10 crores. He had a citation more than 1681. I now I request my friend Damu to hand over the session to you. Yeah, thank you, Prabhakar. Yeah. Uh, in just a minute, I will share my screen. So, uh, can you see my screen, Prabhakar? Yeah, it's not visible, Damu. Once again, you try. Uh, yeah, uh, already. Can, yeah, now. Can see now right? you can. Yeah. No, no. Now? No, Dam. Yeah. Okay, no, okay. Sir, sorry. Okay, sir, we able to low dimensional materials. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, you can see, right? Yeah. It's visible. Yeah. 
Yeah, thank you, Prabhakar, for uh, organizing this uh, RM, uh, RDME FDP program. And thanks for the invitation, inviting me on behalf of the KITS organization. So today I'm going to present some of the, uh, the uh, low dimensional materials and graphene and beyond. But I'm presenting today only most of them on graphene and slightly beyond the graphene. But uh, there's a lot of work uh, already done, but uh, I'm not presenting that much because of the time constraint today. So I'm scientist at uh, IHPC in uh, Singapore, and it is a kind of a DRDO or ISRO kind of or research labs in Singapore. Actually, before going to my talk, just I want to briefly explain where is Singapore and what, how big it is and uh, what is their uh, main concentration. So in this uh, work, uh, this, uh, a map we'll see uh, our uh, just a minute i will uh, put point uh, yeah the singapore is it in here in, in this small part and the tip of the malaysia and if you see this you can't see a, a, in the map just we see this only red dot there very very small country and you can go one end to another end with our time so if you see the mana here in uh, this uh, Telangana here in uh, India, then Telangana is, uh, you see this one, 155 times larger than the Singapore and the population wise six times more than the Singapore also. But Singapore density is much higher. This is 25 times of the Telangana. Just, just to give you that number. So how big it is, uh, all the things. So I belongs to uh, ESTAR, uh, this ESTAR means Agency for Science and Technology Research. Under this one, again, we have two research organizations. One is the Biomedical Research Council and uh, uh, Science and Engineering Research Council. And under, again, Bio uh, Research Council, there is a 10 institutes and uh, Science and Engineering Institute, again, nine institutes are there. This total around 19 uh, institutes are there. So my, I belongs to the Science and Engineering Council, and uh, under that I belongs to Institute of High Performance Computing. Uh, and we do mostly on the computing, uh, we focus on the only on computing side, but uh, other experiments and other things do the sister uh, research institutes uh, among the other nine institutes. So we have here a very big computer, like a supercomputer. Uh, its capacity is one terab, uh, one petaflop uh, computing facility. And we are located in this building. And we occupy uh, two floors in this building, uh, 15th and 16th floor. And on top of that, there is a here in this uh, facility, there is a supercomputing facility in the around the 22nd floor. So we are more about the, mainly we concentrate on the mechanical side, electronic side, as well as the some of the biomedical side, all, all, all uh, this computing we do uh, in our institute. So we are around 300 people are there, and most of them are PhDs. So I belong to uh, engineering mechanics division. Uh, we are at around 50 people are uh, in mechanics related studies we do. And before going to uh, full presentation, just I want to say this very uh, famous quote, there is a plenty of room at bottom. Uh, there's a famous uh, scientist, uh, that's Richard Penman, uh, uh, in 1959 and you see this the plenty of room at the bottom that means we need to understand the many things are the, from the bottom that means uh, from molecular level to uh, and the structural side so bottom up approaches we have to study a lot to get the new things into the mm -hmm. so if you see that technology trends uh, since 1971 uh, initially, there was a textiles or dominating until 1953. Then railways are uh, taken into uh, uh, the main uh, technology driven thing. And it was on until 1910. Then again, automobile pick up the markets. And after the automobile market, the computers dominated and still uh, computers are going on. Uh, 
uh, still under development and uh, at the same time the nanotechnology currently is uh, picking up a lot so still we are in an introductory stage but we have to develop a lot in the nanotechnology side to get the uh, future applications and uh, uh, apart from that there is artificial intelligence and uh, advanced manufacturing technologies are uh, picking up now uh, in around the last two, two years or three years time and we have a lot of advancing uh, towards this manufacturing uh, as well as the artificial intelligence to predict the new materials as well as the uh, predict the material progress we don't the previously based on the experiment as well as the simulation side and based on database they, they used to develop and uh, before uh, this low dimensional materials means in the materials we are uh, talking about in a nanometer scale or micron scale or less than micron scale so in this case if you want to do this manipulation of matter on an atomic uh, scale or molecular scale so that we can achieve excellent properties uh, which we this is this is kind of man-made materials and uh, we can get excellent properties otherwise it's not possible uh, yeah if you see that the, the scale where we are in nan nanometer means uh, suppose if we take the watermelon it, it's around 10 centimeters so uh, diameter kind of thing and if you take the small coin then then it's around one centimeter or maybe 1.5 centimeters uh, size if you put the pen on the pen and with the stop then it come under one mm so here also is under 100 microns and the normal viruses all come under one micro micrometer uh, scale and our, uh, around the small scale something and if you go to the water molecule it comes to the 10 to the power minus 10 that means the 0.1 nanometer scale and uh, currently this uh, the entire world is facing problem with the coronavirus the coronavirus typically around uh, 125 nanometers that means 0.125 to micron so that small uh, currently is taking the world uh, into a recession or uh, taking a lot of uh, uh, lives also and affecting our lives and today we are talking about the maybe nanometer scale one nanometer or a few nanometer scale uh, on the uh, graphene uh, carbon nanotubes or uh, and the molecules uh, c60 molecules uh, and other materials so if you see this what is this graphene and uh, how it came the graphene is a allotrope of the carbon and we know very well about the graphite and the diamond. Graphite is the layered structure of graphene only. And a single layer of graphite we call as a graphene. And the diamond also is a carbon structure, pure carbon, carbon structure, but three-dimensionally linked with the strong bonding. And it is the strongest material uh, uh, till now. And in 1982, they make the carbon fiber currently they are using for a lot of composite materials uh, as the advanced uh, structures using the carbon fiber composites and uh, yeah, but it was uh, uh, developed in 1982 uh, but if you come to the this carbon structure is uh, like a fullerene and it contains six, uh, 60 carbon atoms and uh, like a football kind of thing and one dimension if you come to the one dimension it's like a carbon nanotubes and it's kind of tube but with one atom thick uh, tube and if you come to the 3d uh, this is the called graphite or one layer called graphene so these three are uh, main focus on the, uh, the carbon uh, related structures and uh, if you see this uh, these two uh, especially zero dimension and the three dimension structures uh, and, uh, in zero dimension we got a Nobel prize for this uh, for three people uh, Carl and uh, Smelly and uh, Croto they got in 1996 the Nobel prize for this uh, uh, structure and very recently in 2010 his Nobel prize got by the Mawasalao and uh, AKJ uh, from the UK 
and uh, so there is a lot of interesting uh, things going on in the graphene and uh, uh, one dimensional zero dimensional structures so how they got this uh, uh, this uh, uh, graphene structure this is a very simple one and they take the uh, uh, they take the scotch tape and trying to peel this uh, graphite uh, graphite then they find out that uh, this uh, initially they once they do starch tape then it, it, it goes to the few layer structure then again you do uh, repeatedly repeatedly and then uh, trying to check with the uh, SEM and uh, other uh, uh, transmission electron microscope uh, thing then they finally they got a single layer of graphene and before uh, the before their uh, invention this one and previously is say that uh, a single layer carbon cannot be withstand at room temperature cannot exist but once they got this uh, uh, structure then people are uh, intensified uh, research on that so uh, along the way in 2012 there are a lot of other structures like uh, black phosphorus uh, and, um, boron nitride uh, molybdenum disulfide and so many single layer uh, this and those are maybe uh, those are also very useful especially currently in electronic structure in electronic uh, industry they are still uh, uh, able to detect uh, the new everyday new structures and uh, there are different combinations I mean, they try to make synthesize or they are trying to extract from the layered structures also so these are the different uh, other type of uh, 2d structures and it may be one atomic thick or two to three layers of atomic thick structures. So this graphene come under uh, uh, here, uh, like it is called semi-metal or zero band gap material. So you can use for the very high uh, electron conductivity as well as the thermal conductivity structures. And if you modify anything on a graphene, graphene and it become a metal or uh, it kind of the semiconductor material or wide can wide band gap material. So apart apart from that, uh, this half metals, this chromium dioxide and uh, chromium uh, selenide, all the things, they have, they they exhibit um, around less uh, um, semiconducting property that is zero to one uh, electron volts. And uh, the most famous one is MOS2, this molybdenum disulfide and tungsten uh, selenide. And these are famous for the semiconducting material apart from the graphene. And recently, there are a lot of other structures like uh, hexagonal boron nitride, boron nitride, which have very five electron volts band gap. That means it's in the electronic industry, they call it as the insulator in this uh, material. And uh, this uh, <coughs> NBAC2 also is a superconductor they can use for the any uh, useful application. So apart from that, uh, you can use these uh, different materials like the graphene, uh, boron nitride, MOS2, WS2. You can play around this uh, material so that we can get uh, different material property of the uh, the combined block. It's called as heterogeneous structures. Either you can synthesize by chemically or mechanically arrange like a uh, Lego blocks. You can do that kind of thing. So by doing that, they created a lot of uh, structures. Uh, this is one of the examples I showed. And you can see this, uh, the, the gold color uh, lighting. There you can see this different layers are arranged in a particular manner. So that uh, you can get uh, uh, required property of that material for the electronic purpose, especially currently in the focus on. So, before going to this graphene, so what is the graphene actually? This graphene is a one electron, uh, one atom thick material and it's arranged in hexagonal pattern. So if it is a zero, uh, zero Kelvin, that means there is no temperature at all, then it will be totally flat. Then if it has some temperature, then automatically it goes to the, like a ripple or undulation uh, in the, because of the, uh, this one. Before going to this property, just I want to show that one of the uh, the link uh, YouTube that I uploaded, but I'm not able to download this material. 
and uh, you can view in this uh, one so that you know what is the exactly the graphing and uh, how it is useful for the uh, just a minute just i'm sharing my so are you able to listen prabhakar yeah yeah it's not yes, sir we are listening sir uh, no the sound is okay uh, it's not audible yeah it's not audible just a minute yeah. uh, uh sorry for the disturbance uh, uh, yeah now you check is it audible no 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 play play check yeah it's audible very good introduction so that's why i'm trying to give this uh, um, so this video there are a lot of videos available in the in the internet then you can check uh, anybody interested uh, about the graphene and other things on oh, damo sorry for yeah. the question actually you are using microphone or uh, openly or that yeah currently i'm using the microphone yeah it's making uh, suppose sometimes its uh, voice is high while sometimes low because the uh, based on the distance between the mouthpiece and uh, your voice it is very better just uh, open uh just a minute you try it uh. yeah because uh, yeah now now yeah it's okay it's okay but it was screen is not visible the, the, the ppt yeah, yeah screen screen i will i will i will do that okay, okay. yeah okay 
Okay, Brahm, continue. Okay, now the voice is okay? Yeah, it's clear, it's clear. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was here, yeah. So uh, in, in the YouTube, they, 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 they told that the, the graphene properties, the graphene property, properties are very superior to the uh, whatever we know until uh, mankind. And uh, just I want to repeat once again, this, uh, this tensile strength is very, very high. Is 100 times uh, higher than the hardest steel, uh, which we make for the structural applications. The Young's modulus is come to the around one terapascals. So there is a myth, and the people uh, projected this one. How strong is the graphene? Suppose if people are uh, holding this graphene sheet, and uh, if you have the pencil lid, and you can stand, uh, you can keep the elephant on the uh, pencil. Also, it won't break. That means that's strong. That's what people show that graphene is a very, um, very high strength uh, material. So, if you come to the the current carrying capacity, this is thousand times much uh, higher than the copper conductivity. So, we can use for the this uh, conductive applications like a copper, like a wires and uh, uh, electronic applications, and the thermally stable. And it can withstand around 2800 degrees uh, centigrade. But structurally, it is more stable. Uh, maybe what are the operating temperatures like around 1000 or uh, around below 2000 degrees centigrade? Later, they, it will disintegrate uh, because of the oxidation and other things. The chemical function, chemical modification for the different applications also so possible so that you can use for the, any medical applications or some other applications in the industry. And uh, there's a heat transport is much, much higher than the current uh, materials. Suppose you are uh, working on a laptop, uh, laptop, then it generates a lot of heat. So somehow we need to drive out that the heat. So we can use this kind of uh, material so that it can directly uh, and drive it driven out from the devices. So, in the for uh, heat conducting applications, very good material. And it is very transparent and it is 98% of uh, transparent and transparent. That, that means only 2% it will observe. So, you can use as a in the sheets uh, for the any uh, for a car and other things so that without disturbing the, the inner structures. And it is very lightweight. Then you can see here, this is a carbon block. Uh, it's contain the uh, graphene and nanotube. Then it can stay on the grass. That means that lightweight. Uh, and uh, it's very good lubricant. And uh, it is, you can use for any uh, ground for the molecular playing and other things. So, and there are a lot of applications. I put only very few here uh, in the applications. And uh, when, whenever they, uh, in 1991, uh, they experimentally, they conduct, uh, kind of experimentally found out that this carbon nanotube, this nanotube is very, very strong, uh, is similar to the graphene. And they say that we can use for the spatial vector applications. But till now, uh, it's not, it's not uh, possible, but still they are making a lot of effort to make that kind of uh, applications. But uh, it is uh, possible in uh, near future also. And it's very lightweight structure, so we can use for the any automobile industry or uh, aeroplane industry or uh, racket uh, industries. And uh, it is very good material for the uh, like uh, mobile applications and uh, is a very lightweight as well as the transparent, so we can use for the screens as well as the batteries and it gives a very good focus. And structurally, we can use this uh, lightweight material for the building uh, big structures. And you can use the biomedical application. This is the biocompatible material. So we can use for the bio, uh, bio applications like suppose, uh, like a bone plate. Uh, if you have an injury, and you can use this plate to be uh, kind of bone plate uh, replacement, a uh, bone replacement. And uh, you can use as a nano robot to do something. Uh, go and uh, target at the 
applications like if you go and inject some of the in the chemical in the particular uh, i suppose coronavirus then you can go and directly inject there you uh, can we can tail this one so th these are the lot of applications but still under uh, uh, laboratory level some of them is already on in the industry side like uh, uh, samsung made uh, already big tv screen we use anti graphene and uh, it's still under testing but it's not in the market till now so that means they are making a lot of progress in the using this carbon uh, structures like uh, graphene and carbon in the tubes and uh, if you see this graphene uh, if you have zero kelvin that means infinite graphene is totally flat like if you just you take the paper then it will be very flat then if you apply some temperature uh, zero uh, like room temperature then you will see this kind of ripples it's not as totally stable because the bending uh, stability in the out of plane direction is very very small so that so it go under oscillations so like a uh, water ripples then water is still uh, if you make small disturbance on the water then you have this kind of ripples and the graphene also have similar kind of uh, ripples uh, when uh, at the higher temperatures and uh, graphene uh can visually see uh, in the scm uh, uh, scm microstructures so for ripples on the graphene layer and you can stack together many graphene layers to make a little bit stronger and you can use for mechanical applications and we can fold this graphene anyway like our uh, normal uh, paper sheet you take and uh, try to fold and you see this this edge won't have this complete folding there is a small gap you know same uh, graphene also follow the simpler kind of structure and if you cut into small pieces and you see this kind of edge ripples dominate in the graphene structure because the you have edge uh, uh, different properties here i will come into uh, in the next few say, slides so i try to reduce the the whatever the formulas we use for the computation application but very very few i put here we can be interested in i will share my uh, papers and other thing or discuss with them also so this is the generally we have this uh, pure graphene and uh, indefinite graphene then it will show this energy structure with zero strain the so there is a mean and if you have cut into small pieces like uh, uh, ribbon, then then we'll see this. so based on this if you see this elastic modulus uh, in the nano level that means uh, less than uh, 10 nanometers level then it altered a lot from 1200 to around 2400 uh, electron volts per nanometer square so this is the effect because if you consider the small pieces of the graphene for the electronic structure you have to consider uh, the edge effect and other things so what is this edge effect actually suppose graphene if you take the hexagonal sheet and cut into uh, the, like a small square piece or rectangular piece and you can find out this armchair kind of uh, structure armchair means this kind of structure and we have this edge the zigzag edge kind of structures so these two edges have different uh, properties like one is uh, uh, highly uh, compressive in nature and other one is slightly lesser and you can reduce this uh, compressive nature by uh, putting hydrogen on, on the edge so that it can reduce the uh, compressive edge uh, stress. So if we take this one, so on uh, zigzag edge, you can make it almost 10 times lower than the uh, this, uh, edge stress. And the people find uh, in, in the while synthesis, uh, they do form this instead of hexagon like this, and they, they do form uh, pentagons or heptagons uh, on the edges. So those kind of edges give the different uh, edge. That's called a tensile edge, and uh, there is a magnitude we able to find out uh, as shown in the uh, this uh, formula. So why this 
are uh, important uh, in, the, in the in the nano sheets like if you see this compressive edge you, you can find this kind of structure is it's not any more flat so because of edge behavior it go under rippling or it's kind of bending or it kind of undulations uh, due to the uh, the edge stress and if you have tensile kind of edge you see this kind of ripples uh, this uh, bended structure it's not even more flat so for any applications if you want to use this material you have to understand what is the edge properties of this material uh, especially in electronic structure because uh, it changes a lot uh, in the electronic or uh, uh, like the band gap and other things so uh, if it's, if you take the, the free standing graphene and uh, on the fixed layer how it will uh, lay out on this one suppose if you go to the any uh, generally you take the mobile then immediately we go for the shop and uh, put the screen save, uh, like a screen protector so how this screen protector is stick to the uh, this one uh, to the mobile or uh, ipad or uh, our uh, normal uh, laptop screens so and sometimes they do you see this uh, bubbles forming uh, on the screen so why do they do they? generally this is stick to the uh, device due to the static and uh, you have any contamination here in the, in the bubble or defect then you will see this kind of bubble formation on this. or not able to lay, lay down perfectly there then form the bubble so that means bubble is trapped there so in the graphene also is similar kind of thing so graphene is uh, uh, stick uh, to the another layer uh, through Van der Waals interactions. So Van der Waals interactions is like a static electricity, but it is it, uh, it's strong in that scale. And suppose if we take the substrate, uh, the flat substrate, and uh, trying to put the one layer of graphene on top of that, then it, it's almost flat, but you see this edges have some kind of uh, the uh, ripples. Uh, our edge and relations that's what people call so if you take the substrate is very large even though you will see this kind of undulations and they put one layer add another layer on top of that then it's going to be uh, more and more this uh, uh, ripples so if you want to use for electronic applications you have to take care of all this uh, edge ripples otherwise the function will change entirely so uh, previously I explained that if you have the hydrogen put into the edges, then the, 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 all these layers come in the flat, totally flat. So it 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 is easy to uh, remove this air edge ripples so that you can use for the applications. So that is one of the uh, advantages uh, by functionalization of edges uh, using the uh, hydrogen or some other atoms. So if we come to the graphene, you can modify this graphene by uh, like use as a composite material. And here we call as a two-side uh, hydrogen functionation with a graphene. And there is only one letter uh, difference. Graphene means you get here E, and if you have hydrogen functionation for each and every carbon atom, then we call it as a graphene. So graphene is a uh, uh structure uh is a flat structure but uh, they have uh angst modulus is much less than like 15 percent less than the pure graphene and it is more planar structure than the graphene structure and it's wide band gap material it's around four uh electron volts so the people use for the uh insulation material in the nanostructures so these structures is uh, possible to make uh, using the experimental facility. So take the graphene and uh, put the plasma higher, uh, higher, high plasma range and put the electron hydrogen atoms on both top and bottom side, then automatically it form the bonding. Then you can pattern however you want for the application. So that, uh, suppose if you have this uh, thin uh, strip here, suppose if you remove the all hydrogen, then it is used as a conductor. And here, this is like insulator. So without 
uh, joining and uh, joining techniques, you can use a single layer uh, for the conducting as well as like insulating materials based on the our applications. So, uh, so this is the technique generally people use the half of the, supposing here I showed that there's the pure graphene and this red dot says the hydrogen is uh, stick to the graphene sheet. So it's uh, like a conductor or semiconductor uh, plus insulator. So if you take the entire shield, this is the conducting part, this is the insulating part. So, so that you have advantage of without join, uh, uh, joining technique we can use for the multi-purpose applications. We have to take care of the, the, the interfaces between these two, otherwise it go uh, like a bending or uh, rippling in in between so these are the few can kind of interfaces we identified and if you have this kind of interface then you will see this bending between the graphene and the graphene part and if you have the full edge uh, zigzag edge with the addition atoms then we will have very less uh, bending instead from the 55 we can reduce to 5 degrees but we have to carefully arrange this uh, Carbon atom, like and if you have another kind of uh, edge, like a full armature edge, is totally flat. And there is no uh, five degrees angle. Then that is zero degrees angle. This is totally flat. So we can use for the other applications. So if you take the larger sheets, then you can see this here in, the, in this picture. There is a lot of uh, disturbance in the, in between the this one because of the edge stress we have or. A lattice mismatch between the graphene and the graphene side. So, in the application side, you have to take care of this kind of thing. So, this there are many people propose like a graphene roads or graphene roads. Uh, it depends upon the, the electronic application. So, so that we can avoid this uh, joining techniques at the nanometer level. The nanometer level of the joining techniques also is very difficult to do that. So, that's why they're trying to. And get out that uh, joining techniques by using the uh, conductor instead of the materials in the same graphene sheet itself. So these are the different type of roads uh, which I don't want to go through uh, due to the lack, uh, lack of time. And I just want to show this how this uh, uh, mismatch, uh, lattice mismatch uh, makes the uh, ripples on the, uh, uh, in this kind of structures. So we can do this controlled bending using this graphene. Suppose if you want to take the graphene sheet trying to bend, uh, is mechanically is very difficult because of that scale. If you want to do, we have to do some uh, chemically. So if, if you want to do it some chemically, you have to have this controlled uh, environment so that we can, we can uh, bend these structures by uh, desired manner. So if you have one uh, line of uh, expose this uh, uh, plain graphene structure uh, with uh, the hydrogen atom then you will see this 127 degrees bending and uh, if you put uh, two uh, lines of the hydrogen atoms then you will see this bending is gradually more and more and if you have this five atoms width then you totally will see this totally bent uh, itself uh, without uh, doing anything so similarly armchair side also you can do similar way and uh, but here you need to put more width so that uh, you can bend uh, like a folding uh, like a two layer structure and uh, this part you can see this this part is a uh, totally insulating material and this part is uh, like a conducting material if you want to use for the device applications so based on that we can use for this uh, same graphene for different uh, uh, applications like uh, you can mount so many devices on the graphene sheet and uh, some of them you can bend by like a 3d structures and some parts are conducting some parts are insulating some parts are the semi insulating material so that you can use for the any uh, electronic applications so that we can reduce the size of the our devices so not only this uh, control bending, you can control bending, you make a lot of different uh, kind of structures uh, by using the chemical concentration of the graphene, either one side or two sides. These are the few structures I've shown here. Uh, these are the structures automatically uh, 
uh, hold to the this kind of uh, different shapes based on the uh, based on the chemical functionalization. And if you do any chemical functionalization, the, the, these structures how uh, the uh, the properties will affect a lot. Suppose if we take the thermal conductivity of the graphene. Uh, so if it is a pure graphene, this is suppose uh, it's much higher thermal conductivity. If you have any like a ten percent contamination or twenty percent contamination, the thermal conductivity reduces to almost one to as compared to the graphene. That means uh, only twenty percent it will contact eighty percent it will be kind of uh, uh, it uh, it won't conduct the heat thermal the thermal. So if you see this uh, even uh, for the random functionalization or control functionalization it affect the lot in the um, mechanical properties as well as the thermal conductivity of this graphene structures and if you come to the molecular uh, level of uh, uh, manipulation you can see in the internet you can see a lot of applications they propose like suppose here molecular car suppose if you take this chassis kind of thing then you put this uh, C60 atoms or more higher atoms, then it will roll on the graphene sheet. That means you can use for the, some medical application. Suppose you drug coated to this structure and you can drive these things to the your body and you can release this, some of the uh, drug in particular location. Suppose if you, have, if you have, if you want to repair some of the parts like near to the heart or somewhere else, then you can send these nano robots to the particular uh, place then you can repair you can release the drug in controlled manner uh, instead of taking tablets or injections uh, it will affect the side effect it will uh, have the side effect but the side effects can be minimized by doing this kind of thing and uh, there are a lot of work is going on in this side also but uh, i'm not uh, much touching on this uh, topic so which uh, i previously i told you and this uh, drug can be uh, stick to the graphene sheet by using some chemical functionalization then uh, this drug coated uh, this one can be used for the biosensing applications or you can inject to the body so that it carry the drugs uh, until a particular location then you can uh, release the drug by control manner by using some so that is also uh, a very active issue. come to this uh, c60 uh, structure and we did some experiments uh, like a computation we were trying to see how this carbon uh, 60 behave on the uh, flat graphene structures so this is the graphene structure we put this c60 and it stay uh, around uh, 3.4 nanometer, uh, 3.4 angstrom away from this sheet, it would stay uh, on uh, stick to the graphene sheet. But uh, if you have some kind of functionalization, so suppose if you have the I told graphene is 100 percent uh, hydrogen functionalization or some partial uh, coverage of hydrogen, then it makes very difficult uh, to uh, C60 molecule move to the graphene sheet. And here are the different structures we analyze, and these are the potential energy circles. That suppose, if you are uh, in the plane uh, place, then you can go by bicycling very fast. And if you have some kind of rocky surface, then you go very slow. And if you have the hills and the other places, then you can't go much faster. The same C60 molecule also do same thing, uh, and it will go. Suppose pure graphene go very fast. Uh, on the, the graphene sheet. This is the trajectory we uh, noted. And if we have the graphene sheet, then the trajectory is much closer here and there. It's rotating, but much, much uh, lesser uh, uh, velocity. And partial coverage, then it, it go and stick to the one particular place. So if you want to have this kind of applications, then we can stick to the some of the drug molecules in particular location and they take these things to the uh, wherever you want and then you can release these hydrogen atoms as well as the, the drug molecules in particular location that was the main motivation to explain these things to
So this is the just uh, I want to show this movie. Uh, this uh, C sixty molecule is running away uh, on the graphene sheet, and this is uh, very uh, low uh, temperature, seventy five Kelvin. If you apply hundred kilo, uh, three hundred uh, Kelvin, that means room temperature, you can't see. Uh, this uh, molecule is always go very very high velocity. That is called um, ballistic motion. That's what people call. It. And uh, if you have this uh, here, uh, so behind this one, I put one hydrogen atom. That is, if you have there's some contamination on the graphene sheet, then uh, this C60 ball uh, is going to stick there. It, it won't come out until a certain uh, temperature. Here, if we applied until 300 Kelvin, also it's not able to come out from that place. That means it's creating energy wells uh, in those places, so that it's going to stick there. Whenever you want to release this one, just remove the hydrogen atom behind that, then automatically it will release and go to this other place. It won't stick anymore. So if you increase the size, uh, then uh, this C60 molecule go around only in this well. It's not come out. Even if you go for a higher temperatures like 600 Kelvin or 1000 uh, Kelvin, also it's not coming out because the potential energy well is much much deeper, so it, it cannot come out. So we had to do uh, if you want to use for the medical applications, you had to carefully do the functionation so that uh, it can release easily. And what is the potential well? Suppose if you have this kind of thing, this. C60 molecule previously showed that right, uh, it is go on to stick to this well, that means inside this well, it cannot come out uh, out of this. So that is the energy well. It's based on the uh, based on the size of the the functionalization. Then it will go different down, different. It's it occupy different uh, structures. Like suppose if you have only a few uh, hydrogen atoms, then ten nanogram units around. Uh, and then we have a very small one and if we increase the uh, your domain then it increases the, in the space uh, for the uh, molecular storage purpose and uh, this is the energy wells which i showed uh, in the graph but uh, it may not be much interesting many people so that's why i want to skip so these are the domains uh, like uh, Based on the how much uh, area you are going to functionalize, then it, it build this kind of domains on the flat structures. And interestingly, there is a Singapore. There is a one structure is look like a graphene and a graphene domain. So that's what I just put here. Uh, this is one of the famous structures in Singapore. And which uh, previously showed these graphene wells, uh, we can use. For drug applications, or you can pack any molecule, like a single molecule or multiple molecules, and uh, pack it. And uh, uh, you can put. Particular applications like hydrogen storage or molecular storage or drug delivery or so on things. And suppose if you cut uh, this graphene into smaller pieces. And if you release this uh, C60 molecule on this, I uh, showed here in this top view, uh, then uh, we're trying to apply some temperature and we're trying to see whether this graphene, uh, this uh, C60 molecule, whether jump from out of the graphene or still stay there. Suppose if you take the small paper and uh, if you release uh, some of the like a uh, small ball on that, then it's go uh, away from this uh, paper because if you have any slope or uh, uh, any uh, disturbance it's automatically it will fall down from the paper so similar thing similarly we're trying to see whether it this uh, c60 molecule stay on the graphene or not then we take that at angstrom units uh, width and uh, put this c60 molecule then it go around this is the trajectory we're, uh, we're trying to uh, take and uh, it's not going away from this uh, uh, it's not uh, going away from that uh, ribbon but still stick to the ribbon even at room temperature. Then we're trying to reduce so that whether it will go away from that uh, ribbon or not. 20 angstrom units, no, it's not going away. 10 angstrom, it's not going. 4 angstrom units width, also it's not going away. 
but instead of going away this because of the edge effect it's going to be like a twisting at a carbon nanotube it's a graphene sheet itself the smaller one and it's sticking to this one and again performing all around this uh, edge then you can see the side view how this uh, uh, c60 molecule perform around the, uh, uh, the nano ribbon so that's what uh, so it, it, most of the time this molecular uh, molecules are stick to the graphene and it is very difficult to clean also suppose if we how if we produce the graphene sheets and if we have any uh, contamination in the environment then it go and stick there and those things may affect the uh, mechanical properties or electronic properties but mechanically it's uh, more stable but uh, the electronic properties may change so need to understand how these molecules affect uh, the electronic properties of the graphene when you use to the uh, this one but uh, the lot of electronic industry is matured enough to uh, isolate uh, from the environment that means well packaged structures so that uh, the environment can uh, won't be affected much and similarly we're trying to see the, if we put a lot of molecules on the graphene sheet so what is going to happen so most of the time this uh, c60 molecule stick there and uh, uh, and it is not coming out of this one, and it's rotate there itself and uh, stay as a perfect layer. Uh, then, and we're trying to remove this sheet, graphene sheet, and they're trying to see what happened. Then this all C60 molecules well arranged uh, in the freestanding layer. That means there is no connectivity between these two or these two. All these are the gap and it is uh, van der Waals forces is holding all these sheets into perfect uh, flat layer then if you see this the, the previous one is uh, this is the initial structure we gave to the system and trying to apply some temperature then it go randomly rotate itself on the same position it's not going away from that positions and we're trying to calculate why it is sticking there and whether it is able to go away from that uh, so what is the temperature she can uh, go away and the different type of structures we take and trying to calculate energy well so uh, what is the energy well create so these are the uh, some of the graphs if anybody interested I can come back to the, uh, this graph and explain and if you apply this kind of tensile stress uh, in uh, either one, one direction or two directions then it uh, it shows that uh, this uh, stress can be around uh, 160 no, megapascals and if you have the different kind of uh, this x direction or y direction we are applying the load then based on the sum then it go and fracture then some of the molecules C60 molecules away from that uh, region, then it go away, tear the uh, C60 layer. And this is the first time we conducted and showed that C60 layer can withstand uh, the free standing layer, uh, like a graphene. In 2004 and before that, people believe that this uh, graphene cannot exist on the single layer. And similarly, C60 also can exist in the single layer without any support. But it is much sensitive than the graphene layer because uh, these molecules can jump if you have any contamination or if you have higher temperatures. So we apply uh, these uh, different temperatures and see whether uh, whether uh, these structures are stable or not. The C60 layer and without any support. And here, e here each dot represents C60 molecule and we put many of them in the flat sheet then we apply 300 kelvin structure is totally flat and it's like a bubbles is coming out and going in that's what it's doing it's not coming it is totally stable and if you see until 800 degrees kelvin i increase the temperature from 300 to 800 uh, uh, gradually then you will see this there is a small one mole, one molecule jump to the on top of the other molecules that means its energy is high to be able to jump on the top of them then structure going to destroy 
So one molecule is enough to destroy uh, structure if you have uh, higher temperature. Lower temperature, there's no problem at all. And if you go for 1000 Kelvin, then it goes to the uh, totally uh, like a bore. Uh, uh, it come to the totally disturbed structure. So before ending my uh, presentation, uh, I want to share some of the things like uh, maybe many, many of the people have very uh, interesting stairs. Uh, I want to share how to write a manuscript. Maybe few of them is uh, knowing very well. And uh, I want to share that one. Suppose if you have the piece of uh, material, uh, Prabhakar, can you able to hear? Hello. Yeah, yeah, it's clear. Yeah, yeah. 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 Suppose if you have any piece of uh, small uh, results uh, uh, with you, so we want to write a paper. Suppose this may, we know this uh, small piece of information is not enough to write a paper but uh, with that we, we we have to start somewhere so we're trying to use this uh, piece of information we're trying to write a draft of a, a manuscript uh, based on the were available results then you check the literature and find out what is missing uh, to write it so you can go to literature and trying to study and what is the missing piece then you can find out some of them then you can go and conduct some kind of experiments or simulations for those missing pieces then you collect all this uh, extra information for the paper then you're trying to uh, revise again uh, i think my microphone is uh, some kind of problem uh, just uh, sorry for disturbance uh, just i want to remove Yeah, can you, can you able to hear now? Yes, no, Samu, it's clear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So you have the small piece of information so that we can add some more material by doing some kind of experiments, uh, by knowing the missing pieces of the your work so that we can enhance somewhat better draft than the initial stage. Then reverse draft based on the current results and go through some of the good papers in your uh, topic uh, of uh, writing manuscript so that you know much better. So what they are writing and how they are writing and uh, you can tune your uh, paper uh, based on the, this uh, well reputed uh, uh, papers so that we can uh, enhance your uh, writing capability as well as the draft. So revise draft many times uh, to get the desired quality to publish the uh, journal. Then you choose journal. So based on the already you, you went through a lot of uh, papers and you know where which journal is going to be. And so that uh, you can uh, tune that paper based on this uh, journal format. So whatever the formats you submit, they won't accept generally they they want in particular uh, their general format, either uh, the structure of the paper or uh, references, whatever. So you have to go through their general format and trying to revise the paper and try to submit. So before the submitting, you have to choose very carefully the title. And this the title is a very, very important uh, piece of uh, material in the major. So generally, when you see this, uh, thousands of papers are publishing, but how you attract to the sum of the papers is based on the only title. So you go through that title, yeah, I, it seems to be its work for, uh, it may be useful for my research or general topic. So, so based on the title, you people can go through your paper or not. That's what the title will decide. So you had to choose very carefully the the title of the your manuscript 
and uh, the uh, next piece of information of the title after the title the people trying to see what you write inside the, inside this paper so that means abstract also equally important once the title is attracted then people go through this abstract. then once you write this technically sound uh, abstract then people trying to uh, interested in your paper and go through what you have written and uh, without these two uh, title and uh, good title and good abstract people won't interest to read your paper so that will leads to the even more citations and other things and the keywords also important because uh, nowadays everybody is uh, google uh, put these keywords and trying to see this paper so you have to choose carefully the your keywords so that it can uh, pop up your paper uh, much better than the other papers in competition so this is my personal experience so that's why i try to put this information so that people can uh, maybe some of them can enhance their uh, writing uh, manuscripts and uh, submitting this paper uh, when i was doing uh, my phd i started uh, doing this thing and this is my first paper uh, which first time i write this paper uh, when i was in doing my phd in 2005 around that time then it attracted 49 citations within uh, the few years i am that means you can't uh, say oh if i write paper who will uh, see my paper but you have to put a uh, particular uh, uh, proper title as well as the abstract then even even first paper in our life also it can get a lot of citations this is the one of the paper just uh, my initial paper just i want to highlight so that people can motivate and write the more papers so that they can get more uh, citations as well as the h-index are so important for the uh, the education side so with this i want to uh, thanks to the, my collaborators like uh, professor jan yang he is from uh, ihpc where i am working and the professor professor venit vivek sanai from the pennsylvania uh, pennsylvania usa and Jukun from NTU uh, Singapore and Nama Technological University Singapore and uh, these are the my three PhD students he is MPT and uh, JSN as well as the Lupo all the three people are working in different places one is working with me uh, currently in HPC Singapore so one guy is moved to the Georgia Tech in USA and another guy is moved to the China so with that uh, with uh, this famous quote uh, from the Richard Penman, uh, as usual, nature is uh, imagination for surplus of our, uh, uh, our own, uh, as we have seen from the other theories which are subtle and deep. So with that, uh, I'm ending my presentation. So if you have any questions, I'll take. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dhamo. Uh, thank you. Uh, presentation is, is uh, very excellent and so many applause for, uh, in the chat box. We have evidence for that. Uh, it, uh, it is elaborate too and it's very clear. So you have started with the what is graphene, its uh, structure, other stu 2D structures of graphene, properties of graphene compared to our material and how good it is. Now, why that's why it is attracted for various applications uh, used in automobile and application as well as uh, medical application, it's very good, very good uh, med uh, application. Nowadays, uh, the medicines which can also send through these uh, graphing material. And uh, the research area, uh, what you are stressing is also good. Uh, that is a C60 on graphing, C60 on graphing, a molecule on graphing. Uh, now the graphene, it is doped with the hydrogen, how it is reacting and uh, what are the properties are en enhancing we are enlightening. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, now I open to the audience. You can ask questions. Dear participants. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah, please. Because I, I, I thought that is more clear to the audience also. If it is not clear also, you can ask any time. You can send an email to me also. I am happy to answer to any time, not only today. Yeah. Sir, uh, yeah, there is there is one question from the YouTube viewers. Chat box, sir. Uh, from Chariulu Tatikonda, he's asking, sir, 
are the graphene nanoparticles suitable to disperse in biodiesel or diesel in order to increase the performance of diesel engine please yes yes uh, uh, clarify this doubt he is asking yeah yeah because the uh, c60 molecules like a uh, graphene suit or uh, uh, the c60 molecules uh, also is included as a lubricant so is an excellent lubricant for the this uh, part so no need to use extra lubricant to run the engines so you can uh, mix with uh, the diesel and you can use for the high performance uh, applications sir dear swami sir okay, you can ask your doubt uh, your question you can unmute yourself and you can ask your question Otherwise, uh, in your uh, chat box, uh, we have uh, read this question, sir. Uh, Damu, uh, how can I increase the responsibility of uh, graphene? So, what kind of responsibility? Responsibility means uh, whether it's a chemical responsible or uh, mechanically responsible, or what kind of uh, response? Uh, There's a general question. Uh, I don't know what, what is that uh, responsibility means. Sir, sir. Actually, yeah. uh, SM Swami sir is saying that as a learner and participant, I would like to ask few questions, not as a friend. I think. Uh, yeah, sure. Be... Hmm. First question is. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can unmute and uh, ask directly. Better. Uh, it's better. Yeah, that's the better. That's what I'm asking, Swami. Hello. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, there are so many appreciations, Damu. Excellent presentation mm -hmm. and uh, informative session. And you know, uh, it's uh, good and uh, excellent. Sir, one question from Pravin Kumar Is yeah. graphene suitable for ablative materials? No, no, it's not an ablative material, it's not, uh, because this is a smooth surface, so we have less friction, mostly. Sir, one question from Uday Kumar. Uh, no, sir, Venkat Ramana. As you said, graphene acts as lubricant, can we use as cutting fluid in machining? Yeah, yeah, you can use for the cutting fluid, but uh, I I haven't seen any studies on this one, whether it is... Is a fluid. Uh, that means you have to mix with it some some other uh, uh, lubricant. Otherwise, it it won't work because graphene cannot be liquid. So that that's that's it. My answer. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, another another question from Malayadri. What is the best way to test dispose uniformly in epoxy resin? Dispersive yeah, that is, yeah, that is a slightly tougher question, and it's very difficult to disperse these materials into uh, the epoxy or uh, some other uh, composite material. So you have to do very careful observation uh, because of these uh, nanostructures go and agglomerate and uh, come together in one piece but it's very difficult to disperse but you have to do some chem chemical means like uh, you have hydrogen functionation or oxidation something so that it go and disperse uh, uh, in the uh, in the whatever the material you are uh, mixing or you have to do chemically like uh, doing ball milling or this kind of uh, techniques you have to use and disperse this material into the composite Oh, Damo, there is one question in chat box asked by Suresh Gandhi. He is asking, despite many advantages, why graphene is not commercialized, but become commercialized? Yeah, because uh, by uh, we can't use this material by like uh, taking a uh, scotch tape and removing one layer by another layer. So we had to synthesize through chemically. So chemical synthesis is a very, very difficult to produce a large graphene sheets or carbon nanotubes. So if you have any defects and other thing, then it is uh, more vulnerable 
uh, you cannot use for the a lot of applications but yeah there is there is a lot of progress to in uh, application side especially lightweight materials if you want to do that and uh, biomedical applications and samsung already tested uh, as a screen protector uh, or uh, making screens out of the graphene sheet itself without because it is scratch free yeah, and uh, they already prepared around 43 inches uh, TV screen using this pure graphene. And they are quite successful. But in the mass production, there's a lot of uh, things need to be done uh, towards the uh, application side. Because silicon is almost uh, 50 to 70 years old, but still a lot of uh, research is going on even though it's come to the applications, but still graphene will take some more time to get the uh, application mm -hmm. side. Okay. Still under developing stage. Okay. Yeah, uh, one of the questions from that was uh, asked by Pri Srinivas Rao. Sir, can you use this graphene powder as a sprinkle on uh, open cast iron molds for easy removal of the steel casting? Oh, that I don't have any idea on that. So whether if you use the sprinkled uh, graphene, uh, for them, that that means sprinkled graphene means like a similar to the your coal. You are making the coal into small pieces to sprinkle. Oh. Then you can you can test it with that because the coal also is a kind of a contaminated graphene. Yeah. So you can, if you want, you can test uh, using that. So uh, one question by Dr. Uday Kumar, sir is asking about, uh, sir, what is the present research in metal cutting? So in the metal cutting area, uh, I don't have much idea about that because I'm working on nanostructures. So yeah. for metal cutting, yeah, there are tools uh, they are preparing by uh, like <clears throat> very hard materials like uh, the combination of uh, the graphene structures, some of them uh, use like a composite material and uh, they're trying to come up with a uh, very hard surfaces. Okay. That Those tools uh, I came to know uh, during the last composite materials uh, meetings. Mm -hmm. In the, uh, Until that point I know, but I don't know what area, uh, how, how you can carry that. Okay. There is another question by Venkatramana. Will this material is available in market directly? Yeah, there are, uh, but graphene large size is not available. But uh, the small size powder size, yeah, it is available. Even you can make at home also because you use a oven and you put this uh, 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 powder, or uh, you can burn inside this. Uh, this one you can get this fine powder like a carbon shoot and in the carbon shoot we have this graphene structures even you take the pencil and draw the pencil some line this uh, pencil give this graphene flakes on the leave graphene flakes on the paper but but is uh, for visible eye is a multi-layer graphene and uh, its contamination with the oxygen and other things must not be pure Okay. Still, is there any question? Um, sir, ask Swami sir to unmute and talk. If you want to talk. Ah, okay, Swami. Swami, now we can uh, unmute and you can talk. Hello, Swami. There, we are making unmute. Just ask him to talk. Yeah, already it is unmute. Swami. Okay, Samir. Okay, okay. I think so. Okay. okay, once again, uh, I thank very much, Damu. In spite of oh, thank you very much. Uh, you make it this uh, possible uh, today. I will be yeah, back the inaugural session, but because of you busy, it is not uh, materialized. Today, I am very happy. Uh, my friend is sharing very much valuable information. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ramo.
with my bottom of heart i am saying these words yeah thank you for all uh, for, uh, for your time thank you one yeah. question yeah uh, yes sir yes sir yeah tell me yeah can graphene is used for cutting the for metal catheterization for titanium alloys or uh, other metals uh, steels no we can't use this graphene as a cutting material because uh, this is a very flexible okay can tool generation yeah. or any tools uh, like uh, we have the tools you, like pcd you, and everything you 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 have to combine with the other like a diamond tool right is diamond diamond also some kind of gra uh, graphene only yeah. but but graphene it just structure yeah. is different yeah yeah so line. graphene cannot be used yeah yeah graphene cannot be used we directly used for the cutting tool by graph diamond only okay yeah i'm doing a research in that one but uh, so i asked these questions thank you sir yeah thank you very much thank you hello 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 yeah yeah good morning dr damodar reddy uh, i'm yeah good morning Ajay from hyderabad ah uh, hi uh, i hope you remembered i was your classmate uh, thank you yeah, hi. for hi, your wonderful, wonderful session so uh, yeah, after thank that you. Uh, i became part of this thank you yeah thank, thank you. you i will, I will talk to you thank, thank you sunil joining for this fdp thank you very much yeah. how are you thank you thank you okay namo okay thank you very much prabhakar yeah See thank you, you thank you okay yeah i am closing that you okay okay dear participants uh, we have shared a feedback forms uh, it will be in live up, up to uh, after uh, up to maximum 10 minutes just please hurry and uh, fill this feedback Hello. First, uh, part of if we, uh, when we are reading semi image, so, uh, suppose if the graphene is uh, hybrided with uh, another uh, nanoparticle, so how can we yeah. identify uh, graphene alone? How it is behaving with uh, fibers alone? Yeah, you need to you need to observe in the SEM or uh, TEM observation only. You can see that so this is uh, invisible, almost invisible. You have to have the tools to observe this. Or you can grow in the control environment so that contamination won't come into the graphene. Okay, sir. Thank I you, think, sir. Uh, sorry, sir. Thank sorry. You. Okay. Sir, thank you very much, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. For uh, gracing this uh, FDP, sir. So a lot of uploads in the chat box. And uh, most of them are asking questions. That means that they are more interested in graphene and beyond. Yeah, that's that's good because uh, now India is mostly many people are working in conventional uh, material, but uh, they need to move to the advanced material so that uh, the future generation can uh, generate new materials by using this graphene or some other materials so that uh, research can take into picture. So the, I hope uh, it will be useful for the, some of them. Yes, sir. Sir. Than, than the conventional uh, materials. Thank you, sir. The other day in the inaugural, yeah. our principal sir was also appreciating that uh, this FDP has pushed to the international level. The resource person from Singapore is addressing the participants in India. He was very appreciating, sir, and they were thanking. Sir, I could not get the feedback from sir properly. I could not actuate that. 